On this episode of Fishing and Adventure, we're in the Bay of Islands, dry lining for snapper. And catching fly fish! <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> With a five knot variable two day forecast, the plan was made to hit the road and mission to the Bay of Islands for an overnight adventure in the Surtees. When it comes to fishing, the Bay of Islands would have to rate as one of the top spots in the world with fantastic all year round bottom fishing and some of the most impressive big game catches in history. Launching is relatively stress free at the public boat ramp in Waitangi and provides direct access to the bay and of course the multiple surrounding islands. Having the ability to stay overnight on the boat meant we could make the most of both changes of light and when looking at a marine chart, the whole area just screams snapper. Northeast of the bay is a rock known as the Nine Pin, and with the weather being so good, we decided this would be the perfect zone to fish through the evening. To avoid this week's consequence, the challenge fish is a 10 kilo table fish. Although a 10 kilo snapper is extremely challenging to catch, this is one area where they are likely to reside, so it was definitely worth a crack. We scouted around looking for a bit of sign, and it was apparent the whole place was alive with bait fish. The plan was to burly up a storm and stray line big unweighted baits, but with all the action around, it was too tempting not to do a couple of prospecting drops, and as a result, we immediately hooked up. So just working the, working the slow jig, hooked something decent. So it's Ben's over here with the uh, underwater camera, and he's working the sabiki, and he's hooked something decent. What do you reckon you got there, Ben? Uh, I reckon a car leader. He reckons he's got a car wire. Um, I don't know if I've got a car wire or a snapper here. It's feeling a bit like a snapper with this dead weight, or a barracuda. Hit me on the retrieve, so either way, Feels nice to be hooked up on the soft bait gear. Ben's got a 100% car wire. Oh, I've got a snapper. Yeah, I've got a good size snap. Want to net my snapper, Yeah, Luke? oh gosh, yep. Good to go, just a nice snapper. Bloody good snapper. Oh yeah. <laughs> Get him in the net, please, Michael. Yes, there you go, eh? You know what's good? So what's... we're catching these snapper. Oh, I'm catching this snapper here yeah. in his car wire, right where we're going to be doing our straight line session. Yes, that, that is, is good. A good that sign. bodes well, Michael. Bodes well. That's a fatty too. Is fatty. A fatty. large. There you go. Whee. Oh, he's melting everywhere. Let him go. Oh. Might do my. Uh, that's my first fish for the day, and as I have done in the past, <laughs> I'm getting a major thumbs down from the cameraman <laughs> as I'm suggesting to let this fish go. Yeah, he was. Nah, in the bin. In, in the, the bin, bin, you reckon? In the bin. OK. If he's not going to make a good live, we'll cut the sides off and uh, send him down the burley trail to a nice hungry snapper, hopefully. Speaking of hungry snapper, this guy was hungry. And we're going to be hungry later on. So he will become our dinner. And I think that'll make everybody on the boat quite happy. Is this like the good spot, Mig? Oh, yes. So we'll go in for our evening stray line session. A little bit of current running back here. We've got around, we're sitting in around sort of 17 metres of water. Here we go. What have we got, Mick? Oh, oh lost him. Dropped him. About 17 metres of water. And we've got sort of foul and rubble all around us. And a nice size snapper we caught before on the slow jig was just back behind us. We figured there's a few snapper in the area, so. What do we got? It looks like a kaidu. He's moving around like a kaidu. Yeah. Where's the net? Yeah, there oh, it is. Here we go. Where's the net? Oh, it's in my yeah. hands. <laughs> probably shouldn't handle them so much because we're going to use them for a live view, but as this is a snapper spot, we could probably flap that guy up anyway and he'd make a fantastic fresh, fresh bait. Oh. Beautiful little fish, full of energy. So, you can go in here, stay alive. Beautiful dusk snapper. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's an overnight mission on the boat and we're in the Bay of Islands. The challenge is set to land a 10 kg table fish and we've decided to kick things off with snapper. After landing a nice snapper on a jig, We've now set up for an evening stray line session, which will hopefully provide some nice big fish. So I'm gonna run you through the rig I'm gonna use for this evening stray line session. It's gonna run with 80 pound Black Magic fluorocarbon. Now I'm gonna go with 80, normally we'd run 60 or even 40 if it was a sort of a nice terrain, but there's a lot of foul and reef around us, back behind us here, so if we do hook a big fish, it's gonna take us to the reef, so we want some good abrasion resistance. I'm gonna get about a meter of that, and I'm gonna run with these hooks here, which are a seven bar O C point, from Black Magic. I'm gonna run two of them in a snail setup. So what we're doing is 
pushing that tag in there through the hook is a really easy snell to tie. So you bring down the main part of the trace there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, probably. Push back. Push that back through the hole and the eye on the hook there. We're going to pull that tight. What I've found is these little plies here work a treat. We can just close that in there. It's not crushing the hook. It's basically acting as an anchor point. A couple of wraps on your leader there and just pull that up so that comes up nice and tight. It's running the two hooks, so one sits down the bottom end of the bait, another one holds it at the top. So that's about right for these sort of pilchards and squids that we're going to be using. Bullet tuna. So the same thing. The same old tightening technique. It's tight as. That's how those hooks are sitting there like that. Just going to quickly rig up a bit of kawa, which we caught earlier. There's just this side of it and the cut in half. What I'm going to do is put the hook through there once, through the skin side, out the other side, back through, creating that nice exposed hook. And then up the top, just to hold it all in place and look nice and streamlined. This piece here, now this hook here, and that just goes through. And it just holds it all together. That will float down the burly trail nice and naturally. Hopefully hook a big snapper. When targeting big snapper, it most definitely is a patience game, and you may only get one shot at that trophy fish. Make sure all your knots are good and your drag is set. Yep. Yep. Well, not a bad one, mate. First snapper that showed up in the burly trail. Well, I think it's a snapper. Just dig it in. Just a good head nods, eh? It does. Came up tight, actually flapped up a bit of the bit of car wire that we caught before and chucked that down. Bang! Good size fish. It's a good sign anyway to start the night. Absolutely. Here he comes. Definitely a snapper. Oh yeah, nice snapper. Oh, nice one. <laughs> 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 Woo. Big flapper car wire down the side of him, mate. Get him in the net. Nice. All right, that's, a, that's the first snapper on the straight line, <laughs> eh? Hey, no nice complaints. Fish. That is a nice fish. <laughs> that's what we're here for. Oh, he swallowed it down a little bit. Oh, no, he didn't. You got the top hook. So there he is on that big flapper car wire we just showed you. So often fresh bait's best, but hopefully, coming into that change of light now, that means that the snapper will be on the chew and we can put down anything and they'll hit them. All right, I'm just going to lie that guy there, whip that hook out and let him go, I reckon. That's what you love about these C point hooks, they're so sharp that when you do get that <coughs> snapper got such tough jaws as you can see, but that hook was well and truly in there. Here we go. Make it easier. Beautiful dusk snapper. I mean he's not a monster and normally we'd probably keep a fish this size for eating, but hopefully we'll catch a few more, so this guy's fighting fit, so I'll let him go. Back in the drink. You gonna swim away, buddy? Of course you are. There he goes. Back to the depths. Ha <laughs> ha, all the shallows. All right, mate, your turn. Let's go. Let's go. With the sun disappearing for the day, we were still hopeful of hooking a big snapper, and before long, something solid was harassing our baits. Hang on, I'm getting a run here. Man, there's some big fish down there. Ah, oh, keep pulling the hook. Oh, he's here. Snap, snap. Oh, I'm under the boat. Oh, yeah, there's a fish. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're swimming straight back oh, up right on top of a rock. Oh. That is a beast. This is a beast. This is a beast. I, hope I, it's just, a... I just lost a potential. I hope it's a snapper. I reckon it was 20 pound, that fish I just lost, bro. Honestly. I hope it's a snapper, not a shark. Because it's dark. Keep him up. Oh. What have we got here? Whatever it is, it's exciting because it's dark. And it's a big fish. Oh. <laughs> Fighting a bit like a shark. He's solid. It's a good test for the gear anyway. <laughs> I'll get a look at this guy. Oh, he's just your classic looking school shark or a bronzy or something. Picking you might have had one of those on as well, mate. Yeah, something that's, that's, that makes you feel better about losing a big fish. Yeah. You know it was a shark. Oh yeah. I'm bringing through the Oh, there we go. Oh. Alright, see you mate. Alright, that's the end of the shark. 
Oh, good release. Just took me hooks, so that's good. Those hooks will rust out and he'll swim off and go and terrorise the reef some more. Bit action anyway. All right, so we've got a flying fish. Right, oh, perfect time to net him here. Right on the um, lights. He's coming around the lights. Out here, Ben, to the right. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, so excited. Oh, I'm it. oh, loving yes. a flying fish. That's what we come night fishing for. Yes. Cool. This. Nice. Good spotting. Good... Look at this Watch guy. It. What a beautiful fish. I've never actually seen one up close before. Look at the wings on it. They actually fly, these fish. They're so awesome. I've seen them so often when we're out in the blue water. You see these guys, they fly along and just you see, what's that? Is that a bird? No, big flying fish. Those wings just tuck away there. It looks like a normal mullet or something. And when he decides he's a bit spooked or he wants to get his fly on, boom, out go those things. Wow, what a... Now, that's awesome. That's made my evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's mean. Look at that. Yeah, give me the net. <laughs> really? Yeah, oh, number two. <laughs> they love it, eh? They, oh, just they love the net. net. They love the net. Just swim straight into it. We've been cranking the burly for a while now, and just keep that burly going, keep it going. Creating a big feeding frenzy, and the plan is that the snapper will respond to that too. But meanwhile, while the snapper aren't biting, happily help ourselves to a few of these guys. With a few nice flying fish in the bin for eating and fresh bait, we persevered with the somewhat challenging snapper fishing. We did manage one more nice fish, but it was already after midnight and the cabin was calling. And bang! Look at that! That's a beautiful snapper. Have a bit of snapper and flying fish for tea. Cruise around the corner into a bay, get a bit of sleep, and then up first thing to get into another mission. One of the benefits of our Surtees is the epic cabin space, which has plenty of room for comfortable overnighters. One piece of equipment which is incredibly essential for the kind of fishing we do is a quality four-stroke outboard. Four strokes have come a long way in the last 10 years, and really two strokes are now a thing of the past. Some of the things we love about four strokes, and in particular our Honda, is their fuel efficiency, the outstanding reliability, and they're also extremely eco-friendly. Another fantastic benefit is the quietness. This motor's running right now, but you can hardly tell. That's awesome for a lot of things, but for us, it's great for sneaking into the shallows, holding over those schools of fish without spooking them. The Hondas are also well proven for raising big numbers of marlin. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Good fish. <laughs> We're in the Bay of Islands, and the challenge is set to land a 10 kilo table fish. Unable to catch a fish big enough at our stray line spot, we did manage a couple of solid snapper before we got a welcome visit from some flying fish which we scooped up in the landing net. Day two has dawned and the plan is to head deeper to target one of the tastiest table fish in the ocean, the harpooka. So we're up nice and early, one of the beauties of staying out on the boat. Good sleep in the cabin last night. And we're going to use some of those live bait we caught to try and catch some nice big fish. We've pushed out to a deeper pin at around 70 metres just out past the hole in the rock. See, we're going to get all rigged up and see what we can get. I'm using a rig that we use quite often for kingfish, but it can be used for harpooka as well. So I'm just running a, a deep, deep drop of live bait rig. There's our pre-made Black Magic live bait trace, all crimped up, ready to go, strong as. Now that's some nice heavy duty leader. Just got our sinkers there above the swivel. I'm going to tie that onto the swivel. Live bait goes on the bottom. The weight gets us down there to the harpooka and or kingfish. A nice, easy way to fish live baits down in the deep. The sign's stacking quite low on the bottom. So we'll drop this down, up a couple of winds. Probably five. Oh, we'll stop there already. What's our depth? Uh, oh, yes, it's not very deep. What you got, Mick? I don't know, mate. Just done it. Come on now. Oh. Feels pukerish if you ask me. Pooker. Oh, please say pooker, Michael. Oh, That's, what we, really want. Want. That's what we really want. Oh yeah. Nice shallow water pooker, hopefully. 
Oh, yes. It was good to make the most of it, because we were out here nice and early being able to sleep on the boat. Just in a nice little bay in the Bay of Islands there. Oh, so. yeah, I've got a goldfish on. Yeah? Yeah, it's coming up tight. It's coming up tight now. Ooh. Yeah, we're on. Ah, nice fish. Here we go, I've got some colour down here. What do you got? Now. What do you got? Oh, I think you'll find. Oh, it's a hypocrite! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mick! Oh, yeah. yeah Mick. Exactly what we That's wanted. That's what we wanted. Like I said, not a monster, but <laughs> that is the uh, perfect size for target eating. Target species. Target, target species. species. Live bait. As far as filleting that, we're going to get some awesome meat off, off those fillets. And then also in around that head, too, there'll be some good meat. Smoke it up. Oh, yummy. So you're right down on the bottoms where the harpocker hang out. So we've got these baits just off the bottom, because they've obviously we've got weights and sinkers and that, which we don't want to get tangled and stuck in the reef, because it is reefy, because that's where they live and predate. I think we're one of the same there, Mick. Oh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that hook? Nicely in there. All right. <laughs> yeah. Ended up going with that pre-made black magic trace, just like Mig's one. I might be still good to go again. Put them back in the water for now. Couple of solid apples. Yeah, yeah, double whammy. Woohoo! Cheers, big. Pink. Yeah. Big old mouths on them. So they see that big bit of butt. Oh, that, that livey swimming around. They just hang around in their little dark holes and rocks. Livey comes past. Toof. Down the hatch. Mint. In the bin, eh? In Get the them bin. on some salt ice. One of our flying fish from last night. He's hopefully going to make a good harpooker bait or kingfish bait. Just going to hook him straight through that both parts of the mouth and then through that hard part of the head. So it's a nice streamlined bait for coming back up. Also should make a nice tasty morsel for the harpooker bait. I've also put a big cut down the just a big cut down there just to attract a bit of a, hopefully a bit of a bigger fish, or just attract the fish in general. Just opens up that gut cavity and that sort of, that region, so slap it down and see, see how she goes. When dropping baits for harpooker, you want the bait to be as close to the bottom as possible without getting snagged. Also be aware of your line angle and have someone at the helm to keep the line as vertical as possible. Harpooker fight extremely hard, so definitely be prepared to lock the drag. Yeah, boys. Mix on, mix on. Yeah, on the flying fish. Oh, this is a beast. Make him want to go around the back, because the line angle's this way. Around the back? Yeah, I just can't just get... Oh, 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 oh. You definitely need to get around, because you're fighting him under the boat. Yeah, no, just... Oh. Just don't want to ping on anything. Just stand there, at least you can work yeah, out where you're at. Under? Yeah, under. Come around. Here you go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Yes, there you go, there oh, you go. Okay. Where are we? See, I'm over here. That's better, Mig. Fight him in the right place. Definitely. The importance of following your fish. Get him up off the bottom now. Awesome combo for fighting these fish. This Andros on a composite development rod. It's got the lever drag on the side there. I'm not all the way up at strike because there's no need to be. I'm up away from the reef. So if that fish wants to pull a little bit of line, by letting him pull a little bit of line, he's not going to pull the hook. Oh, he's a good oh, harpy. Oh, good size. He's a good <laughs> size <laughs> harpy. Oh, yeah. That is a big harpy, Mick. I'll help you with it, but I've got my rod in the water, so I can't really... I'll oh, back the drag off and I'll help you. No, mate, I'm good. You it's good? all good. Don't, yeah. He's not, not going anywhere. Lift him in. Oh, I don't know if I can. Yeah, I'll give you a rod. Oh. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! I'm a good size harpy. It's more than a good size, mate. That's a mean size. <laughs> Wicked. On the flying <laughs> fish, eh? On the big old flying Did fish. Did you get one of these? Woo! Yes. Awesome. This might be close to the challenge weight. Oh, it might be, actually. Well, might be a on the scales, mate. You might, have, might find yourself a challenge winner. That what are you looking? is 12, 12 kilo, 12 and a half kilo. Bend that back. Oh, yeah. So that challenge, is... Eh? Oh. Challenge fish ticked off, which is nice. Good man, good work. I'm happy for you. I just love it when a plan comes oh, together. You, know? you get those awesome flying fish, you just net them out of the water at night time. 
It was awesome, awesome little mission it was just to sleep on the boat. And, and then turn the flying fish into that. The very next morning. Absolutely amazingly cool. It's been an awesome trip to the Bay of Islands. We had a wicked night session last night and some fantastic deep drops today. Really good, Maggie. You enjoyed that big harpy, mate? Oh, it's good fun, wasn't it? <laughs> We're going to finish off with a cruise through the hole in the rock. I'll catch you guys next week. Well done on winning that challenge, Mick. Cheers, mate. Consequence time. <laughs>